Hi guys, as promised Wednesday evening, I said we would do a Facebook Live on the orchid dye. Um, just a little explanation why we didn't do it earlier in the week. Basically, I couldn't find my orchid dye anywhere. Lost it. Lost it completely. So I had to order a new one. I had to buy a new one, which is always interesting and embarrassing on your own dye. So I have the packaging for once. Um, but just to show you one of the samples, this is one of the original samples from the show made using the orchid um, and lots of people have asked about it not sure what to do with the little bit that sort of thing so i thought best if i do a facebook live and show you how to do it i will have this die on the show on hachanda on sunday night at six o'clock so it is on that with the new triple layer or quad layers i should call them um from press cut because you actually get four layers but no more sneak peeks on that. Sam might send some out later in the week. Yes, of my samples I've made. Yes, Sam has made some samples for this one. So, what I've done to speed things up, I've actually cut out the orchid already. And what you actually get is three pieces for each orchid. And you get, as standard with my dies, three sizes. So, you're going to get a large, a medium, and who knows where I've put the small... Um, but um, you can see here actually cut in foam if Sam can get in on that bit. So I've already prepped it and cut it in foam so I can show you in foam as well. But you're going to get basically all the nine pieces you need to make the three orchids as used on this card. So I'm going to go through paper first as paper is that little bit easier. You had a haircut? No, I need a haircut. No, he hasn't had a haircut. I desperately need a haircut, um, but I haven't had any time for it. So... I'm going to bring in, first of all, I'm just going to colour this. I'm going to colour it really simply. <coughs> Again, on the original show, I was using the sprays and things which give a beautiful finish. I've used the stamp as well for speed on this one because I have been out workshopping all day today. I will leave the house tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock and I won't come be back home until about 9 o'clock Monday night, next Monday. So I have actually um, not got a great deal of time, to be fair. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a little bit and I'm using cassis and I'm using the flower making paper. Again, this time I'm using it in the silver. I've used it in the gold a lot, but this is the silver one. And the reason I'm using silver is because I'm using a blue tone, which is the cassis. So when I'm using anything that's on the blue tones, so purples, blues, lilacs, that sort of colour, even almost to pink sometimes, the silver's better because they're on a cooler tone. It's when I'm using the warmer shades that I would use the gold paper. That's the benefit of why we've done the two different colours. So a little bit on my finger dauber and I'm just going to effectively colour out. I'm just going to scribble a little bit of colour onto this. You would spend a lot more time at home than I am. But just by putting the colour on, you can see... If you can see, hopefully, the silver doesn't interfere with the purple like the gold can sometimes. So you see we're getting that lovely sort of silver sheen to it. So I'm just going to colour that one. And I'm just going to add, again, that is what I call the flat, these sort of petals. This is the bit that I call the lungs or the kidneys because to me it looks like a pair of lungs or a pair of kidneys and again i'm just going out with the color getting it darker in the center and almost going to nothing at the edges with this piece that i call the tongue going in quite heavy there in the center and pulling the color down so it's softer at the edge but what you must make sure you do on the tongue is colour both sides. So again, I'm going darker and then pulling it out to a paler colour at the end. So I've coloured the three. I could add more shades on there. I could take a deeper blue colour. So I could take something like the Mare de Sud, which everyone knows is one of my absolute favourites in the blues from Isink Dye and just add a little bit of blue, a little bit of blue, and they'll merge beautifully. A little bit of blue in the center, a little bit of blue in the center, just to give that exotic look. Again, I could then take a pen 
and put little dots in or what I would actually use to be honest is the stamp the stamp's got all the dots and everything on it but now what we're going to do I'm going to take my Crafts 2 molding mat and I, I, the reason I say the brand of what I'm using is because this is very very firm if I push down I can't really feel the board underneath and that's what actually helps is having it firm if it's too soft it's really hard to mold I find so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the sort of wings bit, turn it onto its back, take my ball tool, and all I'm doing is running that quite hard around the outside edge of the petal. And this is not like sugar craft, for anyone who's done sugar craft before, where you're actually going over the edge. I'm actually going inside the edge. What that does is it turns it, if you can see, like I call it the pound coin stage. It's like a pound coin, it's quite fat suddenly, as opposed to being flat. And all I do is take the ball tool and push in the middle. Yeah? It gives that quite chunky succulent look that you'd get with a succulent, uh, like a cactus or something else. I've got to say, Sam is laughing his head <laughs> oh, off now no. at my choice of words. No, it's because he's staring at me I'm whilst not. he's talking. Whilst, I've got to talk to somebody. And I was not paying attention, no. I was paying attention to recording it. Well, it's nothing new. No. So, I'm going to take the lungs now, and I'm going to put them on the back again, turn them away from me. I'm going to take the ball tool, and I'm just going to make circular movements from the middle out, pushing on quite hard. Yeah? Round off that edge bit. Turn it round the other way, go from there, and do circular movements out left to right left to right to the edge and just curl that edge and smooth that then when i turn that over can you see you've got that sort of coined look again of the orchid finally i'm going to take the tongue <coughs> and what i'm going to do is scribble on the two ears and then just stroke down what that does is curls that little piece there. You see? Now, to put this together, I'm going to take hot glue. It's a lot easier and quicker. Hot glue in the centre. Then take your kidneys or your lungs and pop those in. Then take the tongue. And I'm going to pop that in the middle and just push down so that everything's adhered. I'm going to curl those up slightly and there you've got your orchid. As it curls over, that's why we coloured the other side. You can see there, that's how we make the orchid. And you can, if you want to, just take, and I have no idea where I've put, there we go. So here I've got some white glossy Nouveau drops. Just put that little centre in. You could add a little bit of pollen or anything else. But that's how we make a paper orchid. You bring in the original card and you can see there. So that's it plain without the stamp. That's it with the matching stamp. Would you colour first or stamp first if you've got the stamp? Stamp first. There you go. Because you need to stamp, it's in a plate, so you would stamp the plate, then cut it out, then colour, then shape. Thank okay. you, John. So, now in the foam. Now I have to say, in the foam, this is a lot more delicate. And the chances are... This little bridge here, can you see how small it is? There's a really good chance that you're going to break that, because I do. But I wanted it to be right for both. So this time I'm colouring foam, <coughs> so I'm going to use pigment ink. Again, opaque, bright colour, extra sticky, works beautifully on this. So I'm just going to take, here I think I've got the fluo yellow. Yeah. And I'm just going to go out with that on the kidneys or the lungs. 
There we go. Okay. Do the same with the sort of petals or the wings. And do the same with the tongue. And with the tongue, I do both sides. Oh, that's picked up a bit of colour from something else, which will work quite nicely. I'm then going to go in with the orange and just flick a little bit of that out. Don't be too careful. Mother Nature always paints with a very broad brush. She doesn't have a fine detail paintbrush. You know, things aren't perfect in nature. They're beautiful because of the imperfections. You can see there, I've got a really nice... This is what I love about pigment ink. It blends so beautifully. It makes us look so much more clever than we actually are. There we go. So, with these, all I'm going to do is pull the petal and I'm kind of shaping it round. You see that? I'm almost pushing my finger through it. There was a great tip left on the John Next Door share group by a lady. And I'm really sorry, I don't remember your name, but there again, I don't remember the name of my neighbours, to be quite honest, even though I've met them loads. Um, and she said, if you're struggling and you're tearing the foam, try doing it first wearing gloves. And I thought that was a brilliant idea because you, you're not going to put your finger through. And, you, you, you know, we know if you're trying to do something with gloves, it's a bit harder because... Mm -hmm you know, you've got less grip. So I thought that was a fantastic idea. So thank you for that, anonymous lady. Um, and I'm really sorry I didn't remember your name, but can you see, I'm just pulling it out. I'm kind of doming it. That's what's so good about this craft artist foam. It's so thin. And I had a question from um, Lady Gemini Linda or Lady Linda Gemini. Um, asking about the flower foam she bought one there's lots of different brands and each brand tends to have a different thickness for hand molding i do genuinely recommend the craft artist because it's 0 0.6 mil but if you're looking for the foam that will work in your hands go for a 0 0.6 mil thickness that's ideally what you're looking for maxine's told me off why has maxine told you stop off? laughing he can't stop laughing Bless him. You, Sam, Sam, has, Sam has two moods. Grumpy and... Grumpy and laughing. laughing. That, that's it. So what I'm doing here is just doing exactly the same. I've got my finger and thumb held and I'm kind of fluting out <coughs> the kidneys or the lungs, whichever way you can want you to call it. Can you do with the ball tools as the well? Difference. You can. I find it a lot harder with a ball tool because I find the heat of my hands help. But with a ball tool, I'll try and show you, you've got to be quite gentle because you're pulling it. You've still got to pull it over the ball tool. Just pushing doesn't achieve that much. It's not like paper. You've not got fibers. So I feel I get a smoother look from that. But yes, you can. And then all I'm going to do, I'm actually gonna use the ball tool for the tongue. I'm actually going to push this into the middle. For the Christmas rose, we're going to do a Facebook Live next week for that. Yes, we are. That will be on next Tuesday night. Yes, after Unicorn. It'll be Tuesday, yes. So I'm just curling this, but I'm using my hands to pull it. See, we're getting that same look. So all I would do is again take a little bit of hot glue those in take my tongue put that in we're going to drop that just onto my mat again just so i can push down and make sure that glue is nicely stuck take the excess off and there we've got a foam orchid. And that really does, to me, have the look of an orchid. Depends on the colours you use, but that has that sort of fluted, beautiful look. But you can, of course, if you want to alter it, pull out around the edge and really 
<coughs> seriously flute this and make it a little bit more fantasy. Now I'm going to show you one more flower that we can make using pieces from the orchid. But there you go, you see? Quite fluted look. Yeah? So finally for tonight. So for anyone who's asking about where John is, etc., if you go onto the John Next Door page, not the share group, there is a post where John is, workshops, Hachanda dates, which we've got more dates that I need to put on there as well. Yeah, and any demos agreed. and shows that he's <laughs> doing for you as well. So this time, just a little bit of yellow. What? And I'm going to go with the orange on the outside. And what I'm doing is I'm using the two medium fluted. The two medium sort of kidneys. Because when I cut these, I cut them in pairs. I always cut the flower foam in pairs. So we're just going to go around like Question, that. Question, John? Yeah? What glue? Can you use wet glue? You can. It never adheres as well as hot glue. I'd, I'd, you know, I'd really hate to say that. But what I would say on hot glue is, I never used to use it. It was actually Jodie Johnson who got me into using hot glue because of the speed and the way things stick. And then when I watched the videos of doing flowers with an old foam of, a, ooh, good 18 months ago, they were always using hot glue. Um, and it, it glues quicker. But one of the things, I know a lot of people are frightened of using hot glue guns, but what you'll actually find is that it's like an iron. You don't burn yourself on an iron if, you, if you're not scared of it. <coughs> if you treat this, your glue gun, as if you're scared of it, that's when you burn yourself. You know, you've got to be confident. You've got to make sure you know what you're doing. But if you think about it, so many of us have an iron in our hands, don't we, Sam? Yes, I do the ironing apart from long sleeve shirts. And short sleeve shirts, if they're linen. If they're linen, yeah, yeah. I don't do linen. Um, but basically, most of us iron, you've got an iron, and iron is far hotter than this is. So if you're confident with this, in the same way as you would be with an iron, it works brilliantly. So all I'm going to do is just flute it out. So I'm basically holding it between finger and thumb and pulling it. And you see? Turn it from that to that. Same again. Fluting the edge by pulling it. That's why I love the foam. Here we go. Okay. And then I'm going to take... Now, this is sometimes easier. If you use a scrap of card or one of the little tongs to start with, you can always cut this down. But I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue on there. And I'm going to put one flower to it. Yeah. I'm going to put just a touch extra on. And I'm going to rotate the other one the other direction. Don't push it down into hot glue with your hand or your fingers. You know, I'm lucky I've got asbestos fingers, but use a ball tool or something. Then if we just float those round, we've got a sweet pea. Can we focus on it? So then we've got something that looks similar to a sweet pea. Okay. You would just need to put one of the little they're angels. Tubes in. Almost like angels. And roll it round, sort of ball it round. I would probably do that with paper, to be honest, to give the little nubbin in the middle. But I love that you've got a little sort of sweet pea. Collection of those in different colours, pinks and lilacs, would look beautiful. So we've made a paper orchid. We've made a flower foam orchid. And we've made our own sort of version of a hybrid sweet pea all from using the orchid dye so just going to run through the products that i've used because that's what everybody asks um so i've used the john next door orchid dye plate and of course there is a matching stamp to this so there's a matching stamp to this 
um, which obviously has the corners missing. It's based on my standard stamp plate design idea. We've used crystal flower paper in silver. So this is 120 GSM paper with the mica set in it. So it gives you the extra strength because this is only a little bit thicker than photocopy paper. But it's certainly, and I know I would say it feels it, but Sam, oh yeah, that does, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. And now I find that amazing. We've used the Craft Artist flower moulding foam in white from the white pack. Yep. We've used dye ink for the paper from Eyes Ink. I used Mare de Sud and Cassis. And for the flower foam, I used pigment ink and I used fluo yellow and orange. Again, and that's the pigment ink. Well, that's it today. That's it for tonight, guys. I'm going to move away from that because everything's hot. Uh, but that's it for tonight, guys. I hope that's helped everybody with the questions that they've asked about the orchid. Please remember, Facebook Lives are about what you want to see. It isn't about me showing you, oh, look, this is new, this is new, isn't this fantastic? Facebook Live is about showing you what you want to see and what questions you've got. So please keep them coming in to me or Sam. Um, we will always endeavour to answer. I have to be really, really honest. 90% of the time at the minute, it's Sam who's answering for me um, because I've got a really, really busy schedule at the moment. Um, so I'm everywhere, but we try between the two of us to answer everything on the John Next Door page and on the John Next Door share group. Thankfully, we've got a couple of friends as well who can log in to our accounts and can actually administer them as well. So it's not just down to the two of us. There's a team of four people who actually help with that. Um, and they will log in as us to help with that. But when it comes to answering questions, it's either me or Sam. So keep them coming in. Anything you want to see in a Facebook Live, just ask us. If there's enough interest, I'll do it. If I think I've made a mistake or I've cocked up on something, like I did the other night with the bleaching, then I will show you and do a Facebook Live on it. But anything else, it would be great to hear from you what you want to see. Just a quick one from me. Absolutely loving what I'm seeing in the John Next Door Share group. There are some wonderful, wonderful things in there. Please feel free to share any of your makes. If it's your first, if it's your hundredth, if it's your thousandth. There's some lovely, brilliant love and support in there from, from me, from Sam, from all of the members. So put whatever you want in there. And remember, if you want to put something in there that's not craft related, just put NCR for not craft related at the beginning. And personally, I absolutely love reading jokes and seeing funny things, um, but not cats. <laughs> no, but anything you want to put in there, please feel free. It's a community. Um, that's it for tonight. Um, my next appearance, when anyone will see me, will be on Hachanda, and that's six o'clock on Sunday. Sunday evening, with the launch of a brand new press cut that we've actually got. I found out today we've actually got some a couple of amazing new card-like products. Can't say much more. I'm not allowed to. Um, that have literally arrived into the country today. I haven't even got any in the craft cave yet. Um, so they're going to be on that show and we're going to have some new bit new, more new products and new bits in there so some great things for people to see um that's it for me apart from if you're going to the stevenage show stamparama on sunday i'll be there from nine from ten until one um just saying hello and showing a couple of bits and answering any questions until then enjoy thank you everybody Thanks. Bye. Bye.